Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler blog. This blog is about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. King James Bible. Today, I want to respond to Practical Christian's video, and he his title of this video is YouTube Watchmen and the Fullness of the Gentiles. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. May you be lifted up and be glorified. May the work here I present be pleasing in your sight. And if in any area I'm in error, Father, may I be corrected. And Lord, I pray that the ultimate purpose of this is to edify the body of Christ, to exhort the body of Christ, and to reprove, correct, and to help each other. Lord, I thank you for this young man from South Africa, Muzzy, practical Christian. Lord, this young man has wisdom far beyond his years. His maturity is astounding. He has natural leadership capabilities and abilities. And Lord, and know that as a young man, his heart is, from my working with him, is in the right place. And he's calling out, rightfully so, in his video. Thank you, Lord, for his work. And Lord, I pray, though, that when areas in here where he is in air. I lovingly reprove him and not to point him out to bring shame on the body of Christ, but for the body of Christ to, that we may use this as an example to learn together and grow in you. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus, until that day, Maranatha. Amen. And Lord, I pray you sustain us, each of us, the saints, by your grace, day by day by your grace, and may we walk in faith. And Lord, when one member of the body is hurting, because brother, uh, practical Christian, you can see this, Lord, and, and other members, Lord, we feel his pain. And Lord, but we encourage and exhort him and reprove him in this in areas that, and Lord, we lift him up in prayer that Muzzy can walk in faith, like all of us, walk in faith, not by sight, Lord. I pray and ask in the name of Jesus, amen. Now, I urge you to see Practical Christian's video I have in the link here, the title, YouTube Watchmen and the Fullness of the Gentiles. Now, I fully, I applaud Practical Christian. He's calling out the foolish who go around uh, hanging on rapture dates, basing rapture theory on incorrect interpretation of key prophetic scriptures like Ezekiel 38 is happening before the rapture. I especially applaud practical Christian for exposing these charlatans uh, like Amir Tesfati who promote their ill-gotten gains by using twisted prophecy. Thank you, practical Christian. Amen. I also strongly applaud practical Christians admonishing careless clickbait watchmen like that Adam guy who base their nonsensical half-baked theories as Bible-based or God-told-them lies based on unbiblical, errant biblical prophecy. These are the false prophets. And they call themselves watchmen, but are in error and do harm to the body of Christ and bring shame to the Lord. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Thank you, practical question, Christian. Now, let me say this. When we watch practical Christian's video, the Lord convicted me personally in error of really watching myself on how I deliver my excitement when I call, say, hey, these are high watch dates. We all must examine ourselves in the mirror that practical Christian brings to the forefront here. And I did examine myself personally. I really did. And I want to thank you, practical Christian, for making us all work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Thank you. 
There is, however, another side to practical Christians' presentation that I see and I must report errors and reprove in love, in the spirit of love to my dear practical Christian. And in a deeper, more profound sense, a heavy burden is now placed on the body of Christ because when we watch practical Christians' video. It's clear that we see a profound suffering from this young man and despair from reopened deep wounds lying at the root of his volcanic acrimony. So I state this in love. Thank you, practical Christian, but then you darken counsel with words without wisdom. Job 8, 38 chapter verse 2. And practical Christian, do not throw the baby out with the bathwater because you're calling out false prophets, yes, but you cross boundaries that are in danger of violating 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19. Quench not the spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5 20. Despise not prophesyings. Or prophesyings. That means in the body of Christ, the spirit, uh, correction, the gift of prophecy is a gift. And what does that mean? That we go say, God told me the rapture will happen today at three o'clock? No, no, no. We are subject to the prophets. We're told clearly in 1 Corinthians 14 that all prophecy is subject to the prophets. What prophecy is today is saying, declaring that which is written by the prophets and saying, hey, we're seeing this prophecy, what, being fulfilled as before our eyes? No, we're seeing this prophecy on the stage being set up. Look up, be excited, saints. That's where I'm going here. We're to comfort ourselves. We're to comfort together. We're to edify one another. We're to say, hey, guys, get excited about this. Now, it's so such a fine, fine line here. Yes, practical Christian is calling it out. But don't cross that line and say, stop talking about the rapture is going to happen based on prophecy. No, no. It's how this is delivered. And I know practical Christians said it's how it's delivered, but I want to make this very clear. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 says, Look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, we're not looking for an old man, God, and next to him a young Jesus with him, two gods, like the Trinitarians love. No, the conjunction and here means literally, you can see my studies, the great God who is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 with me. Read this all together. See, Paul here is telling him the times, the seasons. Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you yourselves. You know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. When they say peace and safety, hey, let's talk about that right now. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. They shall not escape. We're seeing it all the time. Peace and safety, peace and safety, peace and safety. Does that mean, hey, they said peace and safety. Jesus is coming tonight. No. We're seeing the signs. We are children of light and the children of the day. We're not of the night or darkness. So let us not sleep as others do, but let us be, but let us watch. Let us watch. Let us watch and be sober. Let us watch. Brother Muzzy, practical Christian, he is going into dangerous territory in his despair. It's almost like, hey, don't even worry about it. I'm going to go suffer in the silence of the dust of my despair. Don't even look. 
No, no, no. I correct you, brother. No, we watch, we watch, we watch, we live in faith. We're not in the night and drunken in the night. Drunken not only does not mean literally being drunk, but just falling into a despair. We're the day we put on the breastplate of faith. I repeat, we put on the breastplate of faith. I repeat, we put on the breastplate of faith, 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 and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. Why does the enemy attack our mind? Our mind is our head. Our mind is the faculty of our soul. That's where the devil works. That's why we must, in our spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6, we must, what? Be proactive. We are at battle. We must bring every thought, and as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 through 5, we must bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We must, in Ephesians chapter 6, deploy our shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So what, so what does Paul tell us? He says, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not appointed to wrath. We're not going to the tribulation where it's coming. Whether And he who died, whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Now watch this. Comfort yourselves together. Comfort yourselves. What does that mean? Hey, look up, look up. We're, our redemption draws nigh. Our redemption draws nigh. We're to edify one another. Don't fall into the despair that young practical Christian is falling into here, Christian. We are to lift him up and say, no, brother, get up, get out of your wallow and swallow. Yeah, but he says, you're an old man. I'm an old man. I'm almost 70, people. I'm pushing 69 years old. I'll be 70. What can I tell a young Christian? Do you not think that old people have suffered? Do you not think that I've gone through trials that have broken me down to my knees over and over and over again? Do you not think when I was 17 years old, I knew that I would never see marriage or be able to grow up and to be an old man because we really believed the rapture was coming? Yeah. Did I grow bitter and say, that yeah, rapture never happened? No, I was disappointed. Yes, it caused me to really question but I stayed in the faith, and I walked in faith, knowing that our redemption would draw nigh. And I, what happened? I just said, let's don't worry about it. Let's focus on this world. And I walked <clears throat> in the desert, and the Lord led me through the desert of deep despair and suffering. And until I was broken down and came to him and stopped drinking in 2001, and for these 20 past 22 years, by his grace, praise God, I've been looking every day, every minute, every second for our blessed hope. Why? Because the faith of God is within me. It's not my own strength. It says, now I exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded. The feeble-minded are the ones that are easily shaken, tossed to and fro. Oh, that didn't happen. Oh, the, no, support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Yes. See that none render evil for evil unto any man and ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Hey, rejoice. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. <clears throat> Listen, instead of complaining in your despair, let's start giving thanks. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, that I have legs to walk. Thank you, Jesus, that I have eyes to see and I don't stumble around as a blind person. Young people don't realize it, but when you get old, hey, I have gone through cancer. Oh, I don't want to hear your misery and problems. Oh, let me tell you, I'm not going to get graphic here, but when I walked out after surgery, I was complaining that I was unable to, let's be, hey, let's lay this out on the table. 
Mwah, people, these young Christians, eh, you don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand what it's like to when your body starts wearing out and giving away. I was under my breath. Why? Why, God, I followed you? Why am I now in this terrible situation after this surgery? I have no more. I do not have good bladder control. I walked into the restroom outside in the doctor's office, and there was a man who was fixing himself without being graphic. He had no testicles, testicular cancer. His testicles had been removed and he was, he had a mess and it was so foul in the bathroom there. And he was stumbling around and I tried to help him. And he said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And immediately the Holy Spirit says, you want to complain? So young Christians, you want to complain about how horrible, yes, your life sucks. Yes, you're going through hell right now. But look at what you have and be thankful for what you have. You have a body that functions. You have water that you can drink. You have food to put in your mouth and a roof over your head. Be thankful for that. Yes, I know you don't have a job. Yes, I know that you live in the worst corrupt unimaginable conditions. I lived in a third world country for almost seven years. I saw what the communists do to the people. I had lymphatic tuberculosis because of the pollution, the polluted water that I was drinking. I can tell you horror stories. I saw and have lived and seen what in the suffering of people. I've been in Central America. I've seen people living in cardboard shacks. Be thankful. It says, giving thanks. Thank you, Jesus. In the midst of your despair, say, thank you, Lord. Do not quench the spirit. If someone says, and yes, watchman, woman, Lisa Boyce, she is, make some time, she crosses the line saying that prophecy, Isaiah 17 is happening. No, these, these prophecies will not happen until the tribulation. But do not quench that spirit of her saying, look up, look up, look up. We see the signs and prophesying. Do not despise these. You know, we have to follow after love and the spiritual gifts. But guess what? Paul talks about that ye may prophesy. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 through 5. And it says, he that speaketh in own tongue. Now the gifts of tongues that has ceased, but no man understands. But how be it? The spirit, he speaketh mysteries, but he, in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 14, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men, what? Edification, to edify, lift up, exhortation. Exhort means to urge and plead, and what? Comfort. When you quench the spirit, when you say, stop talking about uh, Jesus, put this in your heart, and you had a dream, you're excited about it. No, 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 no. That is for the body of Christ to be comforted and exhorted and edified. It says, for greater is he that prophesieth and speaketh in tongues. Yeah, it's about what? That the church may receive edifying. Now, I urge you, Go in the description box, read the blog, open these links. Don't just say, yeah, 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 yeah. Study. It would take you an hour of study to do my study on the gift of prophecy in the age of grace. And what does the Bible really teach? I had a man tell me to remove my video of a prophetic exciting video I did about this, our rapture. And he says, yeah, you can't say that. Take that video down. I says, I will not remove that video. How dare you? How dare you despise prophesying and quenching the spirit? And I laid out scripture. Listen, practical Christian, he goes on about the Hosea chapter six, the third day. Okay. On the third day, he will uh, revive us, right? or lift, <clears throat> excuse me, the third day, uh, this is uh, Hosea chapter six. And this is on the third day. He will, let me give it to you specifically, um, on the resurrection, resurrectus on the third day. Now, 
practical Christian is saying, okay, so 2,000 years are over, so that means we have to wait another 1,000 years. What? What? No. I asked a 10-year-old, I said, hey, when 2,000 years expires, when does the third day begin? And the 10-year-old said, immediately after the second day ends. So, practical Christian, chuck yourself there. Revive us means to save us, and then raise on the third day he will raise us up. Yes, this is the rapture, but I want to go something deeper. This really raising us up, go beyond the rapture, people. Look at the marriage supper of the Lamb into the millennium. We have to look at the big picture here. The fulfillment of Hosea chapter 6, 2 is really, really fulfilled on the third day, which will be the wedding supper of the Lamb. Bear with me here. We look at the big picture in the millennial kingdom when all, I repeat, when all the saints, who is who are all the saints, which is Israel? Who is that? The church, the Jewish remnant the tribulation saints, the Old Testament saints, we will all join at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, there are the evil doers, and their mind is wicked. Their heart is perverse. I'm going to jump ahead here. They hate prophecy for the body of Christ. They want to remove the church from prophecy. I urge you, the little flock comes to the church. Oh, they do, they do, they do. Oh, I need you to get this anti-venom to, so you can take and save yourself from the poison of the hyper-dispensationalist. Oh, listen to me. The bride, the wife, the church are one in Israel, one in Christ. Read this, read this. Study about this wicked, evil, reprobate devil possessed de demon of Rodney Bellow and his Grace Bible Church teaching that, oh, the church is not in the book of Revelation, and I'm going to prove why, and spends a 10, 12 video series saying that church doesn't mean church. This reprobate is so lost. And then he tells everyone there's no hell. No one's going to hell, and there's different plans of salvation. People understand the Bema Seat. And also, practical Christian was alluding to crowns and things. No, people, listen, this young man is getting darkness. He's stumbling around. Now, why I believe that the Hosea chat, I'm glad that young uh, practical Christian brought up the Hosea prophecy of the third day. I think this is. Now, there are many who think, no, we can't take it literal because um, there are, there are, then there's teaching here that the Hosea chapter 6 2 prophecy is um, referring to tomorrow and the third day means in the near future. But no, we, we have to take these days literally. Why? Why? Because we look at 2 Peter chapter 3, 8, one day is a thousand years. We combine that with what? Three major proofs. We have the wedding at Cana was on the third day. Study this out for yourself, people. I'm not going to do the whole study on this. Um, we have the uh, parable of the king's son's marriage called the wedding feast parable of Matthew 22. Now, I invite the reader to research the profound connection to the rapture and subsequent marriage supper of the Lamb when all the saints come together. Again, I say all the saints, the church, the Jewish remnant, the one-third that's not going to get it wiped out. Okay, the, the, It's all in my study. Email me if you don't understand this. The tribulation saints, the Old Testament saints, we're all one in Israel and see how the hyper-dispensationalists want to quench the Spirit. They, they despise prophecy by denying the church and prophecy. Hyper-dispensationalists, they're liars, they're thieves, they will answer to God. Oh, they will answer to God, and they stand accursed. 
warning to you all. To those who say the church is not the, is not the bride, warning to you. Now, three, we have the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew chapter 25. And I invite the reader to understand the parable of the ten virgins. Now, this is not the church people. The five wise virgins is not the church people. And it's not the rapture people, as you're told in Matthew 25, by fake, false, feeble-minded, non-Bible-reading idiots, morons. Now, a moron is a legal term. It means someone who's willfully ignorant. An idiot is one who is a fool who rambles, doesn't knowing what they're talking about. No, the five wise virgins are the Jewish remnant. Read Romans chapter 9, 25, 27. Read Hosea chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Read Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. Read Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Read Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. Read Micah chapter 2, verse 12, King James Bible. However, now listen, we know that the church, we see this. What? We see this as a type and shadow. We know we can plug ourselves into this. Why? Because if we know what's happening to the Jewish remnant coming to the marriage supper of the Lamb, this gives us a huge clue on our timing because our rapture happens before that. So if we see these things lining up, guess what? Our redemption draws nigh. We also have many other types and shadows. Look at the seventh-day prophecy of the day of rest relating to creation in Genesis chapter 2, King James Bible. Hey, we are required to be watchmen. Read and heed Ezekiel chapter 3. Do it yourself. I'm not going to read through it. This isn't the purpose of the study. Read and heed Ezekiel chapter 33. Read and heed my studies. The little flock comes to the church, the anti-venom for the hyper-dispensationalists. Read the bride, the wife, the church, one in Israel, one in Christ. Read the yoke masters, Rodney Bellow at Grace Bible Church. Read the necessity, the essential necessity of understanding the Bema, the Bema seat, our crowns, our rule with Christ. Read why I rebuke and say the Lord, correction, I say the Lord rebuke those who deny the bride of Christ as the church. Read the church of Philadelphia will be raptured receive crowns, and reign with Christ. Check yourself which church do you belong, the Philadelphia or the Laodiceans. Now, also, I want to talk about practical Christians. He, is, he was kind of stumbling here. There's the fullness of the Gentiles and the time of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles Many people think that when Paul in Romans chapter 11, 25, and remember Romans 9 through Romans chapter 11 is the literary interlude, the set aside, he's directly referring, talking about the Jewish remnant. And he's saying that they're not going to come in until what? The fullness of the Gentiles. Now, this is not the rapture, which many people think it is. No, the fullness of the Gentiles will not happen until the final tribulation saints are saved. Do you think that there won't be Gentiles? Listen to me. You don't think there will be Gentiles saved during the tribulation? Are you serious? That will be the fullness when the final come in or gathered from the four corners and are brought up at the mid-trib. Read, read Genesis 15:16. Read Revelation chapter 7. Read Revelation 12. Okay? And that's your own study. Do your homework. Now, the time of the Gentiles, that's not the fullness of the Gentiles. The time of the Gentiles is Luke 21, 24. Jesus is talking about that, which refers to Daniel chapter 7. Now, this is the Babylonian Empire all the way to the second advent. 
Okay. Now, I want to address the very heart of the matter. Why the despair? Why the loss of hope, which lies at the root of practical Christians' acrimony? It comes down to this, people. Faith. Faith. We must live by faith. We are incapable of apprehending this mentally. And, and we, we can't say, well, I'm going to have faith in today. I'm going to believe in Jesus and believe my redemption draws nigh. If you try to do this mentally, Satan will sift you like wheat. What happens? We can't. We're incapable. Our, the heart of man, yours truly included, is deceitfully wicked who can know it. Our carnal mind is enmity against God. We cannot, will not, no matter how hard we try to be a good boy, a good girl, I'm going to follow Jesus today. I'm going to wait for the rapture and be excited. You're going to fail. You're going to be in despair. You will not find joy. Why? Because you're doing it. We must walk spiritually. I plead with practical Christian and all young Christians to walk in faith. How do you do that? Well, if you don't, where you do, when you don't have vision, people perish. We lose our joy, our hope, our perseverance when we lose our vision. People, this is not physical vision. This is spiritual vision. Seeing the unseen, I repeat, seeing the unseen. How does that work? By faith. You see, our spirit knows, but our feeble minds can only understand what our spirit knows. We all at times are lacking in our faith. We can only walk in this Christian life as a saint by faith. Now, if our spirit if our spirit, if we're not walking in the spirit and stumbling in darkness, our soul, which is our soulical mind, takes control, surpasses and usurps the spirit, meaning we're carnal Christians. We're walking in darkness. We think we're spiritual, but we're not. So what does this mean? <laughs> this means that we must die to self. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, and be resurrected in Christ spiritually, and we don't walk in our faith, but his faith. In Romans chapter 1, 17, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for it is written, The just shall live by faith. And if you're not walking in faith, guess what? You're in condemnation. Be, but there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When we walk after our carnal logic and our carnal mind, no matter how holy we think it is, we're walking in the flesh and we are in condemnation. But we're justified by faith. You know what we know we're walking in faith? When we have peace, we have joy with God through Lord Jesus Christ. How do I get that? We have to die to self. I am Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It's we must experience this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live not I, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I state again, how does a young saint live? I sent this message to young Christian, and I think he needs, we need all of us to read this again, myself included. It's in the link. How? A message to a young saint. To live, we must die. To win, we must lose. I go through this, read this. I'm not going to take the half an hour to read this and study this blog with you. I urge you to read this. I urge you to read this. We have already won the battle, Romans 3.23, and we will win the war in Revelation 19 by the faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Not our faith, but his faith. 
Read this, read this, read this, heed this. I urge you, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Saints, be strong, look up. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that all of us can be strengthened in you. Yes, we're tired. Yes, we're weary. Yes, we're down in the dumps with our all of this garbage and filth and cesspool and, and, and tragedy that we're living in. But Lord, our hope is in you. May we have your faith. May we walk and be with that unspeakable joy of your presence in us and not walk by sight but faith. I ask in the name of Jesus even so. Come soon, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.